so welcome to part 2 of our control and coordination chapter 7 so in the previous part we already discussed about the how the neurons work what is reflex action and all so in the reflex action we learned something called as reflex arc or it was the part through which the information is transferred during the reflex action now it is said or given here the reflex arc occurs at spinal cord why does it happen at spinal cord why does it not happen at some other place the reason is I already showed you the drawing a little bit this was a spinal cord this was the brain this was the nerves getting information away from the spinal cord this were the nerves getting information away from the brain or the order and those red colors were the incoming nerves or they were bringing the information from the body to the brain so here I already told you all the incoming or the nerves come in carrying information from the body to the brain first enter the spinal cord so this is the first place in our brain or the part of the what is the control system where all the incoming and outgoing are connected so this is the best place to form the reflex action so that means any information that comes can be processed here and sent back as fast as possible if this has to go to the brain it will take longer time so main reason or the answer why if the question comes why does reflex arc occur at the spinal cord what we will write is because all the nerves coming from the body at first enter the spinal cord those red colors and when they enter the spinal cord it's the first place where all of them meet together so this is the best place for the reflex arc to occur or to send back the information from the uh, for the reflex action so i hope you understood this part so here let us try to understand some more our something called as CNS and something called as PNS central nervous system peripheral nervous system so this thing will make up the control system our control system or the main control system is made up of two parts central nervous system and peripheral nervous system I already told you peripheral nervous system consists of the nerves and we had two types of nerves one going from the brain called as cranial nerves and one going or coming to the spinal cord called as the spinal nerves so here I al we already learned in part one that in the brain or the cranial nerves only outgoing will be present or carry information from the brain to other parts of the body in spinal cord or spinal nerves what we see is they bring information to the brain also or to the spinal cord and they can carry information from the spinal cord to the body also that means both incoming and outgoing now what will happen if the spinal cord get injured let us say this part got injured you fell down you broke your neck somehow or somehow the neck was broken so this part got damaged so what will happen now you will not die reason is because most of the brain will control your heartbeat your maybe breathing everything will be controlled by the brain however what happens is no information will come and reach your brain from the body reason is because all the information comes first at the spinal cord from the spinal cord it goes to the brain so depending on which part of the spinal cord damaged there's a chance of you being fully paralyzed or half paralyzed reason is because all the incoming information comes first the spinal cord if the spinal cord get injured the information might not reach the brain if it doesn't reach the brain the brain will not be able to analyze it and give orders accordingly so suppose this part was carrying information from your left legs this part got damaged somewhere here then what will happen no information from the leg will come to your brain as a result your brain will not know how to control your legs I hope you understood this so this is what happens in case of spinal cord injury now let's go to central nervous system CNS central nervous system it is made up of two parts our main is the brain and next is the spinal cord spinal cord 
these two are responsible for controlling our movement in our body what does the pns do or peripheral nervous system these things help the central nervous system in performing the control and coordination how does it help by carrying the information from the body to the brain or the spinal cord or from the brain to the body i hope you understood this pns or peripheral nervous system made up of nerves nerves means simple connections they are responsible for carrying the information and helping the central nervous system which is made up of the brain and spinal cord into the control and coordination now spinal cord we already learned it it is responsible for controlling the reflex action so before going into details let us see two more things called as voluntary and involuntary you already got this in class 9 voluntary muscles involuntary muscles in our uh, muscle tissues or, or muscular tissue i hope you remember it if you don't remember it let us do a small revision voluntary is something which we can control by thinking involuntary is something which we cannot control by thinking or unconsciously see here i am not saying control by the brain not control by the brain i am saying control by thinking not thinking i hope you got it so here when we study reflex action reflex action is controlled by what by the spinal cord did you think before dropping the sp spoon no so that is a kind of involuntary why is it reflex because it's controlled by the spinal cord it is reflex because you are not thinking about it it is involuntary so let us say breathing when you suppose heartbeat let us consider heartbeat when you heartbeat do you think and control your heartbeat no you cannot who controls it brain so let us compare it reflex is controlled by the spinal cord heartbeat is controlled by the brain so reflex is sorry a reflex action is controlled by the spinal cord so reflex heartbeat is controlled by the brain so not reflex however both of them are involuntary why are both of them involuntary because both of them are happening without you thinking about it i hope you got it so when i say voluntary it does not always means reflex it include reflex along with reflex some other actions are involved like heartbeat our blood pressure your balancing because all this are controlled by you without thinking part so that is involved uh, so this that is uh, yes involuntary and when i say voluntary that will be controlled by the whatever you can think about it and control it that will come under our voluntary actions now our brain is divided into total three parts fore brain mid brain and hind brain for details you can look in the book page number 118 figure 7.3 so our fore brain is a major part it's a very big part it is made up of cerebrum sorry yes cerebrum our mid brain is made up of what was it called as where is second tectum and tegmentum and the hind brain is made up of medulla pons cerebellum so all of them have got different different functions so in this case when i were talk we were talking voluntary fore brain will be responsible for the voluntary action or anything that you can control by thinking you want to run voluntary you want to write down you are holding a pen you are making your hand muscles move voluntary you want to let us say jump from somewhere you are making your leg muscles move voluntary so whatever all the voluntary actions are controlled by the fore brain mid brain and hind brain will control the involuntary parts different different involuntary involuntary such as our heartbeat maybe our blood pressure our movement of the eyes and all those so this is the main difference fore brain voluntary and the other two will control the involuntary fore brain along with the voluntary will control your thinking part also your memory and lots of other things most of the things will be controlled by the fore brain 
mid brain what does it do it controls very few actions some involuntary actions such as it's already given in the notes movement of the eyes and audio visual reflexes audio visual reflex means suppose you heard something very loud noise and you get shocked you jump up that's audio visual reflexes and all next the, but the main part of the midbrain is to connect the forebrain and the hindbrain it acts as a connecting bridge between the forebrain and the hindbrain hindbrain we already know it contains of medulla cerebellum pons notes it's already given medulla, medulla will control your blood pressure salivation vomiting pons will help us in communicating different parts of the brain and cerebellum is responsible for balancing or maintaining equilibrium so let us try to understand little bit in details so what is thinking what is memory let us say this is a brain this is a forebrain just consider this part controls your thinking this part controls your memory and this part controls your sensory inputs maybe look you know, visual you're looking at something your eye signal will come and enter here so let us say you were living in a room you have not gone outside forever ever you have not gone out once also you have not watched any tv so suddenly one day one day you went out and you saw a tiger here let's say there's a tiger so what will happen is your eyes will detect the signal sorry light as a result the retina in the eye will convert the light signal into some chemicals and those chemicals will be picked up by the nerves those nerves will send the electrical signal to the visual part when it goes to the visual part some signal will go to the memory and some signal will go to the thinking when it goes to the thinking what will the thinking do it will bring some information from the memory and if you had seen a tiger you have never seen a tiger earlier meaning, meaning your memory is empty there is nothing here about a tiger so what will happen you will think about it and then you will not know what to do however because some information is now going to the memory some new connections will be built up i already told you what was brain a large connections of neurons new connections are built up those new connections now will store the information about the tiger now you don't suppose you have not seen a tiger you went nearby the tiger beat your hand and so you ran away okay so right now your memory have got new connections what are those new connections new connections will include current electrical signals and chemical signals which will inform or which will contain that experience next time if you see a tiger those experience will be brought by the thinking part the new tiger which you have seen will go from the visual to the thinking part and here what will you do those electrical signals will pass from here to there here to there and some will go to the muscle cells as a result you will run away immediately so this is how brain works and this is how memory works did you get my point so in the brain it's nothing but a large group of neurons large connections of neuron information passing from here to there here to there accordingly it's so complex that you know how to think so this is how our brain will work same in case of our med cerebellum which controls the balancing so cerebellum is somewhere here bottom part of the brain so what happens here is balancing meaning suppose you are going in a cycle you are learning how to ride a cycle obviously you'll fall down in the starting part because you don't know how to balance but as you practice and practice your medulla will learn the balancing part now obviously all of you know how to ride a cycle now what do you do you try to fall down knowingly you can never fall down knowingly because the cerebellum is controlling your balancing and cerebellum controls an involuntary is an involuntary action balancing is involuntary you want to fall down but you cannot fall down if you try to fall down your hands will automatically adjust the balancing so this is what involuntary means so let's go to the next part then so next topic is uh, we have got now tissues our brain tissue our spinal cord tissues they are very 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 important why are they important because they control each and everything that we do it controls our movement and we already learned why do we move to adjust to the surrounding if we cannot move accordingly we may not be able to survive or we may die for example if a cat says a dog and it doesn't know how to run away the dog will come and bite it 
So, or you see a tiger and you don't know how to run like the previous example and you will be bitten in the hand, you may die or the tiger will eat you, something will happen. So, these tissues that is the central nervous system made up of brain and spinal cord are very 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 important for our survival. But they are very soft tissues, soft means they can easily get damaged. So, how to protect them? To protect the brain, we have got skull or a skeleton of the brain. To protect our spinal cord, we have our backbone. Our spinal cord is protected inside the backbone. So, now, if this is the skull, this is the brain tissue, we have some fluid in between, some liquid here, so that it will protect or cushion it. Suppose you fell down, what will happen? If you fell down, if there is no liquid here, this brain part will touch the skeleton here and it may get damage. As a result, to absorb some amount of shock, some fluid is present here. Just like in a helmet, why do you wear a helmet? To protect your head, it's very hard. So you will, you will, suppose you meet with an accident, nothing will happen. However, try wearing a helmet that doesn't have spawns inside, it will not work. These spawns will be there to absorb some amount of shock. So this is how the brain is protected. So our next part will be how does the nervous tissue cause action. In simple word, how does the nervous tissue cause movement or more simple, how does the brain control the movement. So let us see how. So we already, already know how the information is accepted, the stimulus or outside touch or whatever, the skin cells, maybe eye cell, whatever will accept it and release some chemicals. These chemicals will be picked up by the dendrites of the neuron this will be sent via the exon into the next dendrite and so on this is a synapse so electrical chemical electrical chemical as a result it will reach our brain now the brain or maybe the spinal cord after analyzing it they will send information or instructions for the muscles to move that instructions will be carried by the outgoing nerves this time. This was the incoming nerves and that will be the outgoing nerves. In exam, do not write incoming nerves, outgoing nerves. It's just for you to understand these words. Okay. So, those nerves which are coming or the nerves bringing the information from the brain to the muscles. What will they do? So, let us see. Let us say this is a muscle cell. I hope you remember it. What was the name of this muscle cell? It was a striated muscles. Okay, strip, strip, strip. And lots of multinucleated, this, that. So, suppose this is a neuron. The last neuron. And this is the last exon ending here. The signal came from this side, the electrical signal. The el when this nerve re release, receives the electrical signal, it will release some chemicals into this part. When these chemicals are released, the muscles will absorb those chemicals. Now, when those chemicals reach the muscle cells, there are some special proteins inside the muscle cells called as contractile proteins. You got in class 9. These proteins are special. Why are they special? Because they can change their shape. Let us consider this example. I have a plastic, maybe a balloon in this shape and I have put the contractor protein inside. The proteins are in this shape right now. Let us say what will happen if this protein changes shapes and becomes like this all six of them they change the shape and become like this then obviously the outside balloon or the plastic covering or the cell also will change the shape to become bigger and shorter it was small and longer now when the contractile protein changes the shape they became shorter but bigger and this part is connected to the skeleton this part is connected to the skeleton so obviously the skeleton will be moved up so i hope you understood it 
so this is how the movement happens or the nervous tissue can cause action so what do you write when the information coming from the brain comes the exo the new nerves releases some chem chemicals near the muscles these muscles will receive the chemicals and on receiving the chemicals the contractile proteins present inside the muscle cells will change their shape as a result the muscle also will change the shape and whenever the muscle changes shape we can have movement so i hope you understood this part so in this case one thing one extra part to understand or just to remember it's not from the book or not from your syllabus if i touch you so let us say this is a cell and this is the let's say this is the nerves so we already know when this cell release some chemicals this nerves pick it up this nerves or sorry neuron pick it up this neuron releases some chemicals in the synapse which are picked up by the next neuron this neuron will release some chemicals in the second synapse which are picked up by the next neuron now what happens is once the chemicals are released it takes little amount of time for them to go back inside this exon so what happens you might have feel if I, if first time somebody touches you you'll feel it somebody keep on touching you again and again again and again slowly slightly what happens sometimes you may not even feel it reason is when you're touching it this chemical got released here signal gone second touch again chemical released now when the chemical is released here it picks up but this exon has no more any chemicals it is released all the chemicals to the synapse it will take some time for these chemicals to return back to the exon so that it can release back the chemicals so sometimes what happens on repeated touch you may not feel one or two touch out of them reason is for the chemicals it takes some time for the chemicals to enter back into the exon so that it can be released again into the synapse to continue with the signal so this was it so points to remember here will be how the information transferred in our nerves in the form of electrical and chemical signals electrical inside the neurons and chemicals in between the neurons or in the synapse how many types of control system are there two types central nervous system and peripheral nervous system peripheral means the nerve nerves what the nerves simple connections what are their functions just to carry information to the brain or from the brain what is cns central nervous system what does it do it controls movement how does it how many parts are there two parts brain and spinal cord brain controls most of the thinking part most of the voluntary parts most most of the involuntary parts and all spinal cord what do they control they control only the reflex actions and the second function is to collect all the information from the body and send it to the brain what is voluntary and involuntary voluntary was something which we can do by thinking involuntary was something which we cannot do by thinking or which we cannot control by our thought so our next topic is coordination in plants or how the plants control its movement so we already know there are two types of movement what were they direct movement then what is the next one move sorry growth just like us plants also show this type of movements direct movement and growth movement direct movement is shown by not all the plants some of them do it for example the touch me not i hope you know it touch me not that plant it's a weed with small small lip like this what do you do when you shake it the lips fold up i hope all of you have seen this plant so what happens here is it's a kind of direct movement so here the heading in your book is given immediate response to stimulus stimulus i hope you remember it stimulus was the outside or external that uh, touch you do or maybe the light you see all those external information is what we call a stimulus immediate response means immediate means fast response means doing accordingly whatever happening doing accordingly so this part is clear all of you so let us see how immediate response to stimulus happen in case of plants so let's take the example of touch me not so let us say you touch this part it's cell here cell here 
cell here and cell this other four cells let us say and let us compare the same thing with human being let's say this is the nerves this is a skin cell which will detect the touch and this will be your maybe spinal cord and this is your brain okay to move this part suppose this is the muscle cell striated and brain will send a signal so what we can see in case of animals skin will touch, detect the touch form an information release some chemicals information transfer in the form of electrical and chemical little chemical most electrical so travel very very fast who was helping it our neurons or our it is also called as nervous tissue you remember it already nervous tissue is made up of neurons nervous tissue will bring it nervous tissue will analyze it and send information back to the muscles this much is clear in this case what happened plants do not have nervous tissue that means they don't have any kind of neurons they don't have any kind of nerves so when you touch here obviously this cell will do some chemicals now this cell have got lots of chemicals these cells have got less chemicals so what happens when some part is more some part is less obviously diffusion what is diffusion movement from higher concentration or higher number to lower concentration or lower number that means these chemicals will diffuse and enter here now this cell have some chemicals what will it do it will further move here why because this have got again less chemicals so in this case it will diffuse from one cell to the next one cell to the next one cell to the next here what was moving electrical signal was moving and very few chemical here what is moving only chemicals electricity very fast chemicals slow so here the information transfer will be slow very slow as compared to the neurons or as compared to animals now suppose somebody touched you you want to beat him back so obviously brain will send the information back to the muscle cells how will the muscle cells move how was it by changing the special proteins inside the cells in this case plants do they have muscle cells no then can their cells change special proteins no then how will the plants move when this plant receive the chemicals what will they do they will change the water concentration inside the cell they will either send out some water or they will absorb water depending on what is needed just like in the movement or the opening and closing of stomata water was changing inside the cell as a result the cell was moving it was either opening the stomata or closing the stomata same in this case by changing the amount of water inside the cell the plant can show the desired kind of movement so what's the difference in direct movement or immediate response to stimulus in animals and plants animals the information transferred very fast in plants it transferred comparatively very slowly in animals the movement is happening because of muscle cells or muscle muscular tissue in plants the movement is happening because the information sorry the water concentration is changing inside the cell how is the information transferred in animals in electrochemical signals electricity and chemical both in plants it's only chemical signal so our next part is movement due to growth here one word you need to understand something called as tropism tropism means following something following something now the plant can so four types of tropism one is hydrotropism hydro means you all know it what was it so tropism can be positive or negative positive means following negative means going away so hydrotropism meaning what following water then positive if going away from the water then negative hydrotropism following water example roots roots will always try to follow the water so positive hydrotropism our aquatic plants what they do the leaves will always come out of the water that means negative hydrotropism same way zeotropism zeo meaning what earth or so in this case we'll consider gravity like our trees always grow opposite of gravity negative zeotropism our roots always go towards the gravity positive zeotropism tree will be chemotropism 
in certain chemicals this we'll see in our reproduction something called as germination of seed sorry germination of pollen grains this you'll see in our chapter what is it sorry chapter 8 reproduction so next four will be phototropism already we know photo means light so if it follows towards the light for the positive phototropism if you follow away from the light negative phototropism so i hope this part is clear now let us just in the book it's given we should do an experiment to show hydrotropism it can take a, do a very simple experiment you take a big glass beaker filled up with sand oh, sorry not sand what is it soil because if you put sand our plant will not grow let's put soil here and what we do take a small seed and germinate it here now seed is germinated means the roots are coming up the shoot is trying to start to come up don't put water here what you do you make a small or always daily what you do you put water drop by drop here only in this reason this side then what will you notice is this root as it grows will bend this side towards the water so this means that roots always follow towards the water so what we call it positive hydrotropism so this experiment you can show this experiment i guess i did not give you in the notes so you make this experiment you write in your own words i will check it when the school reopens so i hope you understood this part now our main point here is okay plants are growing okay there is tropism plant can either follow something plant can either move away from something but which or what thing will control it how does a plant know to move towards the sunlight how does a plant know to move away from the gravity how does the plant know to search for water so all of these are controlled by some chemicals called as hormones definition already given what are hormones are chemicals which control growth and development so we know in immediate response or the earlier one direct movement we learned the movement was happening because of certain chemicals now again i'm saying growth is also happening because of certain chemicals but this growth chemicals and that direct movement chemicals are different growth one are specially called as hormones because they're controlling how the plant will grow the earlier one was simply causing movement it was not helping in the growth so they will not be considered as hormones so either it be plants or either it be animals hormones means chemicals which have been growth and development of the organism so in the plant we have got lots of hormones some cause in the book you can see auxin gibberellin cytokinin abscisic acid and all so here it's given auxin what does it do it make the cell grow longer gibberellin what does it do it help in growth of the stem cytokinin it makes a cell divide faster abscisic acid inhibits or stop the growth of the cells so let us understand our auxin and our abscisic acid auxin make the cells grow longer so let us say this is a new tree just coming up this is a tip very on the top so let's say sun is coming from the right side so we know whenever we place a plant in a dark place and open a window on one side or allow the sun to come only from direction or the light to come only from one direction the plant will bend towards the light why reason is when the sun or the light is coming this is a tip of the cell or the tip of the plant the top part okay and we already know in the notes it's given auxin is synthesized or produced at the shoot tips and make the cell grow longer so these fellows will produce lots of auxin now when the light is coming in opposite direction all the auxin diffuses or move to the opposite end of the light auxin will not stay towards the light auxin will move away from the light that means this part will have more auxin this part will have less auxin as a result this cell on the left side will be 
longer than this cell. So it will look something like this. This will be little longer and this will be little shorter. This is a old cells. Next, when new cells are dividing, again this side will be the longer and this side will be shorter. Again, this side will be longer and this side will be shorter. You see this is short, short, long, long. This is how we'll finally see the planets bending towards the light. Light was coming from this side. As a result, the opposite side cells were becoming longer and longer, longer and longer. Why were they becoming longer? Because oxygen was getting deposited that side. Oxygen will move to the side where the light is not touching. As a result, the cell will grow longer and push the plant towards the light. Same in case of our tendrils. You know tendril, our pea plant, those, these things, tendril, what do they do? They help, help our what is it those plants which crawl on the ground to hold on to support how do they work same case in this case what was it the sun in the tendril what is it support suppose there's a branch here touching it this cell will detect the branch and when it detects it this cell will send all the oxygen to the opposite side as a result the opposite side will grow longer and longer longer and longer as a result it will go around the support so this is how our oxygen will work so I hope you understood this. Now let us look at our abscisic acid which inhibits growth or stops the growth. How does abscisic acid work or why does it work? What is necessary for abscisic acid? It is it results in it's a main function or the main result is to stop cell division so that the things will die. Which things? Mostly leaves. The plant wants the leaves to die so that the leaves can fall down. Why? When does the leaf fall? Mostly during winter. Why during winter? Let us see. Secondly, you might have noticed there are different sizes of leaves. Some leaves are very big, some are very small and small leaves don't fall that much. Big leaves are the one which falls a lot during the winter. Reason is, the bigger the leaf, the more amount of stomata. You remember stomata? The small holes on the bottom part of the leaf that was used to exchange gases. And we remember transpiration. What is transpiration? The process by which plant loses water through stomata during photosynthesis. So what we see is bigger leaves, more stomata. More stomata, more opening. More opening, more water is lost. More water is lost means what will happen? The plant may die. As it, during winter, it's, there is not much water available in the ground, not much rain is falling down. As a result, the plant needs to save water. So if it stomata is present, obviously it will open during the day night time it will close now if the plant throw away the leaf what will happen it will not be able to do photosynthesis but here it's a trade off means it has to give up something to survive what does it give up summer time do as much photosynthesis as possible store the food winter time don't do photosynthesis stop it and let the leaf fall down so that no photosynthesis meaning what? No transpiration. No transpiration meaning what? No water will be lost. So this is the reason leaves will fall. Now how to make the leaf fall? How to make it? By releasing abscisic acid. How will the plant know it is winter? It can detect or certain chemical signals will be present due to the duration of the sun. How much sun it is getting. Accordingly, some chemicals are released and one of those chemicals is abscisic acid. When abscisic acid is released into the leaves, what will happen? The leaf will stop cell dividing. Whenever you stop cell dividing, the leaf will die. We already know our cells die constantly and are divided and renewed constantly. Now, here also leaf cells will die constantly, new cells have been created constantly, but when abscisic acid is present, new cells are not being created. As a result, the whole cells will start to die slowly, slowly, the leaf will dry up and fall down. So this is what happens when abscisic acid will be present.